Hello from Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Today the title of my message is, Has Your Faith Been Shaken Lately? I know mine was last year and I like to share my testimony how I'd lost faith and God restored me. You see, in May of 2019, my sister Sonia was diagnosed with melanoma cancer. She started a new clinical treatment at MD Anderson and was doing well, and then later on they discovered another type of cancer on her left kidney. They operated and got all the uh, cancer off her left kidney, and she started her treatments back um, for her melanoma cancer. Well, in December of 2019, she started feeling really bad again, so they went to the hospital, did scans, and discovered that the melanoma cancer had spread to her brain. She had about six to eight tumors in her brain. So she went back to MD Anderson to have radiation treatments to shrink the tumors. And the doctors did tell her before the treatments that sometimes, which is very rare, that the radiation can aggravate the cancer and make it spread instead of shrinking it. But we all had faith that the Lord would heal her here on earth. You know, she had people from all over the world praying for her. And, you know, it just, I had faith that he was going to heal her here on earth too. And there's two ways the Lord can heal the child of God. He can heal them here on earth so they can be a, a witness and a testimony and encouragement to others, or he can take them to heaven. So one of the two. And so she, Sonia comp completed her radiation treatments and was waiting on the results. And... Monday, February 17th, 2020, at 3 a.m., I was wide awake here in Cambodia, and my brother back in the States, Michael, he contacted me saying that Sonia had took a turn for the worse, and the doctors only gave her five to six days to live, that I need to come home as soon as possible. Well, that same day, that Monday, that night, at 11.30 p.m., I flew out of Cambodia and arrived the next morning, Tuesday morning, at 9 o'clock in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. My mom came and picked me up at the airport. I went home, got cleaned up. We went to the hospital, had a wonderful day with my sister. She was wide awake. She knew everybody. She was laughing. And it just, it was like a big family reunion. And also about half of her graduating class and of high school came to visit her that day. So we had a really good time. It was like a big family reunion, high school reunion. It was really great. I, I just, if, if you didn't know she had cancer, you'd think, oh, well, she's going home tomorrow. She's fine. There's nothing wrong with her. But that wasn't the case because you see that my sister's cancer, the radiation aggravated it and it multiplied. And there was nothing else that the uh, hospitals could do. But still believing that the Lord would heal her regardless. And on Tuesday, um, I mean Wednesday, the 19th, it was the next day she was supposed to go home and I was going to move with hospice, and I was going to move in with her because her husband needed to go back to work, and her daughters needed to go back to school. And I was just going to take care of her for however long it took. You know, that, that, that those were the plans. But Wednesday morning, I was awake because of jet lag, and um, my brother called again at 3 o'clock the next morning on the 19th and said, we need to go wake up Mom. We need to go to the hospital. Sonia's in a coma now. We need to rush to the hospital. So we got dressed, went, and sure enough, when we got there, she was in a comatose state. She couldn't move. She couldn't talk. When the doctors flashed a flashlight in her eyes, they wouldn't move at all. They were just dormant. She was just sleeping. It was just like she was just sleeping. That was it. She couldn't do anything else. She couldn't move her body. And it was such a contrast from the day before. She was such alive, so alive and active and laughing and uh, talking with everybody and it was just a big party and to go from that lively atmosphere to this dormant atmosphere was just it was crazy it was, it was hard to understand and so we waited and at lunchtime everybody went to lunch her husband her daughters and a lot of the friends that were there with us supporting us went to lunch except for my mom and I and we just started praying for my sister, and she made a few sounds, and that got us excited, but it was short-lived. And then she started doing that labored breathing, where she would stop breathing altogether, and then all of a sudden she'd go, <gasps> and then start breathing again. We would say, come on, Sonia, keep breathing, don't stop breathing, keep breathing, to encourage her, because she could still hear her. The doctors said she could still hear us. 
So we did that, and but uh, when she started doing that, it, lunchtime was almost over, but uh, my brother-in-law and my nieces hadn't come back to the hospital room yet, so I ran outside to tell my, our friends to go get them quickly because Sonia was going fast. But when I did that, they had just come off the elevator into the room, and it was just immediate family only in the room. And at 1.23 p.m. on Wednesday the 19th of February, my sister took her last breath. God took her home. He healed her that way. And I was standing there holding her hand, her left hand, in shock. Everybody had left the room, but I was still holding her hand, not believing what I was saying, that she took her last breath and that God took her home. Because I truly believed he was going to heal her here on earth. I was just in total shock. I wouldn't let go of her hand. Yeah. Trying to wrap my mind around it, really. Why did he take her home to heaven instead of healing her here on earth? And, um, you know, two days later we had her funeral. And after uh, a week and a half to two weeks after her funeral, the pandemic hit. So all international flights were canceled, including my flight back to Cambodia. And when the international flights started back up, Again, Cambodia had shut its borders for three months, so I was home with my family for seven months, and that was a great thing because I needed my family and they needed me during this time of the loss of my sister. And see, Sonia was saved. She knew Jesus as her personal savior. She had a, a relationship with him, and she was not afraid of dying. You know, she didn't want to leave her girls quite yet. She wanted to be here on earth for a few more years, watch them grow up and get married and such, but that wasn't the case. God needed her to come home, and he called her home. And I still went through the, the I just was going through the motions. Went to church, then when the pandemic hit, we had to watch church online. I kept reading my Bible, but I just, I wanted to quit, I wanted to give up. I went into a deep hole of depression and thinking, did I not pray the right prayer? What if I should have prayed this instead of that? And I almost went stir crazy doing that. And I said, no, I can't go there. I just I just refused to stop thinking like that. I couldn't because I would have gone crazy and had a nervous breakdown. So I, I didn't go there. I stopped going there, but I decided I'm going to quit. I'm not going back to Cambodia. I'm quit ministry altogether. I just want to stay here and take care of my family, and that's it. Well, the Lord started working on my heart and healing my heart, and I said, okay, I agreed to go go to return to Cambodia, but I wasn't going to pray for anybody. And that's still not thinking right. It's not a right attitude, a right heart. But God continued working on my heart. I said, okay, I'll go back to Cambodia and I will pray for people, you know, and ask for forgiveness. And he started, continued to do a work in my heart. And after seven months, the Lord provided for all the finances for airline ticket. And with the uh, pandemic, Hitting Cambodia had new requirements that we also had to have COVID-19 health insurance and we had to have a $2,000 deposit on arrival in case we were tested positive and had to go to the hospital. That $2,000 would pay for all of our expensive and test, expenses and testing. So God provided for all of that. I knew I was, it was time for me to go and my mom did too and so did the rest of my family. So on October 2nd of 2020, I arrived back here in Cambodia. And as the plane was landing, I had peace. God's peace was over me. I spent two days in a, in a hotel to quarantine with all everyone in my flight. We each had our own room, and we all tested negative. So we had to finish our 14-day quarantine at home, and we all tested negative again. So that was a relief. And about mid-November, one morning, I had just spent time with the Lord and everything, and I was just reflecting back on 2020 my sister's death and the pandemic and everything else that happened after her, after she passed away. And the Lord reminded me, remember Job? He lost everything. And then all of a sudden it was like a light bulb that went off. It's like, you know, you're right. I, and I looked at my sister's death in a whole new light, in a whole different way. And because, you see, God could have taken out my whole family the same day he took out my sister, but he didn't. He was merciful and gracious, and he did not do that, thank goodness, because I don't know what I would have done if he had done so. I was not, definitely not like Job. And just to just to um, 
reiterate about Job chapter 1 and 2. I'm going to give you a, a summary of what happened. In, in Job chapter 1, you know, it said he was from the land of Uz, and God considered Job uh, righteous and faithful in his sight. And one day the angels went before the Lord, and Satan was with them. And the Lord, you know, asked Satan, where you come from? And, the, and Satan responded to him, up from roaming the earth. And God told him, have you considered my servant Job, my faithful servant Job? You know, and the devil says, well, yeah, the Job praises you all the time and worships you because he has all this wealth. Look at all these, you know, he had 10 children. He had 7,000 sheep. He had 3,000 camels. He had 500 uh, yoke of oxen and he had 500 donkeys and very many servants. He was a wealthy man and he also had his health. And Satan said, yeah, he has all this stuff. He says, strike everything and get rid of everything he has and he will turn against you. And the Lord said, all right. You can, just, you can do what he ha with his possessions, but do not touch the man himself. So Satan uh, destroyed all of his livestock, and his children were in a meeting at one of the son's house. But the, one of his son's house, they were all together, and the wind came, and the house collapsed, and it killed all of his children. And for each instant, his livestock was gone, was either um, stolen or burnt from fire that came down from heavens, from the skies. And only a few, a handful of servants survived to come and tell him all these reports, one after the other, you know. And he threw ashes on his head and tore his clothes. And he said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't know about you, but if that would have happened to me, I don't think I would have had that same attitude. I know I didn't have that same attitude when my sister passed away. I didn't think the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I was upset with the Lord at the time, I, I, but I wish I could have done like Job, you know, and th that was his first test. He lost everything, but he didn't blame God. Now, in the second chapter, Satan went before God again with the angels and told God that if he put sickness on Job, that surely he would curse God and, and, and not follow him anymore. But... Uh, God, the, the Lord said, go ahead, you can put a, go ahead and let him put a sickness on him, but do not kill him. So he puts a sickness on him. He put very painful sores all over his body from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. He was just covered in these awful, painful sores. And Job scraped you know, with the sores with a, bro a piece of broken pottery. And so you know, in Job chapter 2, verse 9, his wife told him to curse God and die. But all, in all of this, Job did not sin. You know, Job told his wife, you know, what are you talking about? We should accept the good with the bad. You know, and in life as a Christian, once you accept Jesus as your Savior, that doesn't mean that your life is going to be a bed of roses, that nothing's going to go wrong. You're still going to have life problems. You're still going to go through trials and tribulations, but the Lord is with you to help you go through them. You know, we take the good with the bad, like Job explained to his wife. And even later on in Job, he has three friends that come to encourage him, but instead they start wondering what did he do wrong, what sin did he commit, you know, for all these bad things to happen. That just wasn't the case. But through all this, with his wife telling him to curse God and die, and with his friends trying to figure out what he did wrong, he did not sin against God. And I wish I could say the same. You know, we, we need to be more like Job when we're going through tribulations and don't understand what, why God is doing something instead of quitting. Don't quit. Don't give up. Because you see, in Job's latter years, God blessed him doubly with all of his wealth. And he was, uh, was given ten more children, seven sons and three daughters, and double of everything. He had double the servants, double the sheep, double the camels, you know, double the donkeys and the oxen. And so we need to be like Job. So I want to encourage you to be like Job. And I, it's my prayer that my testimony has helped you. God is still healing my heart. You know, and he's still working on me, and I have I, my faith has been restored. And I, I just pray, don't give up. No matter, you know, if you thought God was going to answer your prayer a certain way and he didn't, 
or he allowed something uh, bad happen in your life or to someone in your life, don't give up. Keep the faith. Keep pressing in. And it's my prayer that you continue to press in in Jesus' name. Thank you, and God bless you.